Hi, Dr. Meg here. Um, today we're going to talk about diet and fertility in dogs. So we're going to talk about some of the things that you should be getting in your diet for your dogs to boost their fertility and what the studies show and also things that you w might want to avoid because they have a known effect on the fertility of dogs. So fertility in general in dogs and humans as well is declining um, worldwide and um, probably a lot of it's due to environmental toxins. Um, so, But first we're going to talk about things that you need to have in the diet um, rather than things that you need to leave out. So um, there has been a lot of studies done on this, on what micronutrients and antioxidants can do to boost their fertility in dogs that have poor sperm function, for example, um, and low sperm counts. And um, as far as antioxidants go, the most important of these are the um, omega-3 and omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. So the ideal um, ratio of these, these two fatty acids is four parts of omega-6 to one part of omega-3 and the very best source of these that's very easy for you as a breeder to supplement your dogs is actually sardines so I've got some sardines here I thought I'd show you um, this is what I feed my dogs and just giving them sardines once a week is enough so the dose that I use with my dogs my dogs are roughly about 10 kilos or 20 pounds in weight and the, the dose is 140 grams or about five ounces of sardines. So I just buy them whole. They actually like the bigger ones, which tend to be cheaper, which is great. Um, and of course, I thaw them out for my dogs. And I don't cook them. I just feed them raw. Sometimes I have to make sure they're pretty hungry before they'll actually eat a sardine. Sometimes, if your dogs are not used to it, then you might want to chop it up and, um, and mix it through the other food maybe give them a little bit with the other food during the week but my dogs will eat whole sardines no trouble at all and if they don't I just serve up the same food to them the next day until they're hungry enough to eat it. I also recommend that you give your dogs um, about 140 grams or five ounces per fortnight of lamb liver this is per 10 kilo body weight or 20 pound body weight so you know I just buy lamb liver I prefer lamb to beef, uh, sometimes it's hard to get. The reason I prefer lamb is because it often usually hasn't gone through a feedlot. It's not likely to be a sick animal. And um, you know, this is so packed with nutrition and also is a good source of those um, omega-3 and 6 fatty acids that we talked about with the sardines. So if you've got your sardines per week and your liver per fortnight then you've got it covered. The reason we don't feed more liver is because we are worried about um, overdosing vitamin A. Now you know nutrients are like anything else you know in the right dose they're marvelous. If you have too little then you can have health issues. If you have too much you can get toxicity so you've got to be a little bit careful of not overdosing with things like vitamin A and vitamin D and just make sure you're feeding the right amount so do be careful with your supplementation. Now with the, the uh, micronutrients that have been found to boost um, sperm quality and numbers in normal dogs we're talking here about vitamin E and selenium, zinc and folic acid or B9. So Firstly, I'm uh, talking about these four. I know that there have been studies done on this where dogs that had male dogs that had lower than normal fertility um, were boosted with their nutrition with these four elements and they found a significant increase in fertility as a result. Now, one thing you've got to bear in mind is that it takes at least six weeks for a sperm to be manufactured by the testicles. It's a long, slow process. So what you're seeing with your dog sperm right now is basically what was happening six weeks or so ago. So also if you want to increase fertility, you have to give your dog at least six weeks for to actually see a result in sperm quality as a result of a change in diet.
So anyway, there was this study done. It did have an impact on dogs with low fertility. And uh, let's look at each of these in turn. So the first one was vitamin E. Now that what they're recommending, the dose was three milligrams per kilogram of body weight um, as a supplement, which is pretty hard, pretty high amount. Um, and even the, just the recommended daily um, amounts for dogs, vitamin E is pretty hard to, um, to reach uh, satisfactory levels in a normal diet, in a natural diet even. Um, there's very few things which are high in vitamin E. So it is one of the things that you probably should be supplementing in your breeding dogs, especially if you've been suffering from low fertility. Um, so that's easy enough. You can just go get yourself some vitamin E capsules and just slip them down your dog's throat, you know, every day and make sure they're getting the dose they need. Um, now the next one was zinc. Now zinc, uh, their recommendation in the study, which is a higher level than normal, was 2.4 milligrams per kilo of body weight every day. Now luckily zinc is pretty high anyway in beef. Um, so if your dog's getting enough beef, then you should be pretty right. Uh, you might be, you know, just making it with the amount in natural sources like beef. So you might want to consider a little bit of supplementation with zinc. If you're feeding commercial foods, please be aware that, you know, most of the time, even if it says this is the lamb version or this is the salmon version of our product, when you look at the ingredients, it is likely to be mostly chicken because chicken is cheap. So, you know, do check the ingredients. Um, a lot of commercial foods, you know, won't have the, the actual content that you think they might have. So it is a good idea to give natural beef sources to your, um, your dogs just to make sure they're actually getting what you think they're getting. And, um, you know, a reasonable amount of beef in the diet and other red meats will be um, a good provider of adequate zinc levels for most dogs. Now the other thing that they had in the study that I read was um, selenium. Now luckily selenium is high in chicken and beef anyway, naturally, um, unless you're in Western Australia like me where your animals are running on um, soil which is very, very low in selenium anyway. Um, you might have issues there but most of, of the sources of beef and chicken out there are going to be adequate in selenium anyhow. Now the next thing was um, vitamin B9, which is also known as folate. Now in a natural diet, folate can be um, lacking. Um, luckily it's easy to reach the levels recommended um, by the veterinary nutritionists just by adding a little bit of nutritional yeast to their diet and uh, the amount is like a flat teaspoon of nutritional yeast. Um, for each dog, you know, each 10 kilo or 20 pound of body weight per day of your dogs and um, that should easily cover their needs of vitamin B9 or folate. Okay, now they were also in the study, um, they were talking about, they actually used some um, fertility enhancing herbs which you might also want to add to your dog's diet. One of them was maca, maca powder, uh, easily found in health food shops. And the other one was ashwagandha, which is a just a general tonic um, that improves an animal's vitality and health. So that's a quick run over the nutritional needs um, that you should make sure you're covering with your breeding dogs. Now what about things that you need to be avoiding in their diet? And there are quite a few of these. And um, now we, first we're going to talk about environmental toxins. And these environmental toxins are probably what's behind the decline in uh, fertility in our dogs and ourselves um, throughout the world. So one of them um, are the plastics. Now the plastics um, of particular concern are DEHP and PCB. Uh, they've got long scientific names, uh, diethyl hexyl phthalate and polychlorinated biphenyl. But DEHP and PCB is what they're commonly known as. Um, now, they, these directly reduce sperm quality and they also particularly affect male embryos. So if your dogs are eating food contaminated with these plastics, you actually see a reduction in the 50-50 um, sex mix. So you'll get more females 
well actually it's really just less males okay um, also um, any males that do result can be affected by cryptorchidism which is like one a retained testicle which is quite common isn't it sometimes especially in some breeds more susceptible to that problem the sources of these dangerous plastics uh, include um, you know the wrappings on meat that's gone off um, in, in uh, big supermarkets and things they they won't sit there and unpick all the plastic wraps from these meat it'll just be sent off for processing by a pet manufacturer and the plastic and all will end up you know containing these dangerous plastics will end up um, in commercial dog food and um, even commercial dog food packaging you know like the lining inside big plastic bags and and um, those kind of wrappers they can contaminate pet food with the PCB plastics that's very hard to avoid the problem when you're buying commercial dog food for your dogs it's a good reason to consider um, trying to develop a natural diet for your dogs <clears throat> and I'll talk about a natural diet in our and the next email I send you okay so another one we got to be concerned about is um, the level of antibiotics in pet foods in particular um, now the one in, that is being measured and studied a lot is oxytetracycline um, now this is commonly used in um, you know to treat sick animals um, they use them in broiler production like meat birds um, you know if they're having a, a problem with enteritis they, then they might um, you know put that give that to the whole flock um, now with humans there is a withholding period which means that they're not allowed to then slaughter those animals for human consumption for at least seven days but if any of those animals die in the meantime um, after the enteritis outbreak in a shed then they'll just be picked up and commonly they'll make their way to um, dog food because they're okay for pet consumption so the other similar issue is with beef cattle Sorry about that crow making a lot of noise there. Um, beef cattle, you know, you just imagine your farm, you've got a sick um, beast and um, you're treating it with antibiotics um, and the uh, oxytetracyclines are commonly used because, um, you know, they're not considered to be as dangerous for humans as some of the other ones um, with the, the development of antibiotic resistance, for example, in humans, which is a big issue in medicine. Um, so you've got this, this beast and you, you're treating it, it's been ill, um, and then unfortunately it dies. Well, what are you going to do with it? We'll call the knackers and it ends up in pet meat now there are also natural foods to avoid unfortunately and um, there's been quite a fad for example um, for grain free diets and uh, what have manufacturers done what have commercial dog food manufacturers done about that is they've replaced those um, grains they used to put in there like wheat and corn with legumes legumes such as soya beans and lupins and peas for example now um, the problem with seeds in general but particularly legumes is that they they contain high levels of what we call anti-nutrients so anti-nutrients are the way the plant protects its investment in its seeds and tries to reduce the um, amount of uh, predation of those seeds so these anti-nutrients will actually interfere with um, the digestion and absorption of um, some of the the nutrients that we actually need in our diet so this affects our dogs as well and particularly we're talking about you know they're carnivores so they don't have um, the natural flora normally in their guts to deal with this sort of thing um, so what sort of effects are we are we talking about here um, commonly the the kinds of things which are blocked and therefore become deficient in the diet even though they're present in the diet are things like taurine and other amino acids and um, this is why there's been a link between um, the use of grain free diets and heart conditions because taurine is a really important amino acid for the heart function of the muscle of the heart these anti-nutrients can also interfere with fat metabolism and we're seeing an, quite a rise in problems with pancreas function like pancreatitis in dogs especially my breed mini schnauzers but other breeds as well and um, you know legumes in the diet can exacerbate and, um, and actually help set up these issues like that.
Um, they also, legumes are very high also in oxalates. Now this is of particular concern to breeders because oxalates directly interfere with the absorption of calcium from the diet. So you might be feeding adequate calcium but your dog's not actually getting that calcium um, because it's been blocked from being absorbed. So you know this can cause protracted labours um, and other issues that we're seeing in um, breeding dogs are things like um, fetal absorption and lower overall fertility. Okay, legumes also notoriously have very high levels of phytoestrogens in them. Now what are phytoestrogens? Phytoestrogens are just um, estrogens which are like the plant version of the estrogen. So these legumes in the body of your, your dogs actually act exactly like natural estrogen in their body and you know they they mimic the effects of that so you know we end up with fertility issues and other things include um you know bitches which come on heat too often during the year and suffer low fertility so it's a bit of a minefield out there isn't it so you know i do think that if you really want to get a handle on the fertility and health of your dogs and to be able to advise your owners on how to keep their pets healthy then it really does pay to get a handle on natural feeding and um, and supplementing your dogs the natural way and try to steer away from commercial food. Uh, I see commercial foods kind of like junk food. I mean, they are highly processed. But more on that next video and thanks for your time. Bye for now.